This past May 20, Capture One Pro 16.6 was released with all new retouch faces. In this video, we're going to be looking at whether this is a big improvement that deserves an upgrade recommendation. By the way, it's important to note that Capture One just increased prices for its perpetual license and annual subscription by 6%, and now it costs 317 US dollars and 190 US dollars, respectively. For context, that's at least 50% higher than an annual Adobe Lightroom subscription. So there's a lot riding on Capture One to be able to show that it can consistently produce must-have features to justify its very premium and ever-increasing price. But is Retouch Phases one of those must-have features? Let's find out. So here we are in Capture One. As a reminder, before this version, you had to rely on manual methods to retouch skin, which can be both time-consuming and error-prone, or augment your workflow with Photoshop, which is an additional hassle in that it relies on yet another app. Well, with 16.6 Retouches Faces, not anymore. To use it, you'll first need to add the tool. I'll right-click on the toolbar. I'll click Add Toolbar, Retouch Faces. As I've already gone ahead and added Retouch Faces, the option is disabled as you can see here. Next, I'll navigate to Retouch Faces by clicking Retouch. As you can see, it has already detected the face. Let's start off with the Blemishes slider. The Blemishes slider targets skin imperfections like pimples, acne, or minor skin bumps. Lower values, 0 to 40, address prominent blemishes while higher values focus on finer details. I'll increase the slider. As you can see, it's a pretty good result. The blemishes have been removed and fine texture maintained, while limiting its effect to just the skin. Good job! Here is the before and the after. Next, let's try dark circles. Dark circles reduces under eye shadows, maintaining the skin's natural structure and fine lines. I'll increase the slider. And there you go, dark shadows have been removed just as advertised. And once again, the result is pretty natural. Next, let's use the Even Skin slider. Even Skin smooths contrast variations across larger skin areas without affecting color. And it includes a texture sub-slider to control the preservation of skin texture. I'll increase the amount slider. As you can see, it did the job. Although you might want to reduce the amount for more authentic looking results. Next is the contouring slider. This slider enhances facial depth by intelligently darkening specific shadow areas, adding dimension without over editing. I'll increase the slider. As you can see for this face, the effect isn't that great, producing weird shadows in the wrong places. Finally, let's use the impact slider. The impact slider adjusts the overall strength of all the applied retouching effects, enabling quick fine tuning of the retouch intensity. By default, the impact slider is set to minimum. Let's decrease it. And as you can see, it allows for easily reducing the effect of all the adjustments for a more natural look. By the way, as smart as Retouch Faces is, it is still an automated feature and therefore may miss certain blemishes. In this case, there are still blemishes in the neck. No problem, we can refine the adjustment further via Capture One's excellent heel brush. Here is the original. And here is the retouched. As you can see, it's a big improvement. Next, let's look at another example. Once again, I'll move the blemishes slider, then dark circles. As you can see, once again, both do a good job. Next, let's use even skin. Unfortunately, the result looks overdone. I'll dial that down. Finally, I'll use contouring. For this particular face, contouring works a lot better, giving a more natural looking result. Finally, I'll apply the healing brush to remove any missed spots. 
Here is the before and the after. By the way, another benefit of Capture One's implementation is its support for up to 32 multiple phases. You can see in this example how its AI has accurately detected both phases which are simultaneously affected by the retouching. Next, let's move on to another important feature of retouch phases, its ability to do batch retouching. To do that, I'll make my adjustment on a selected photo. I'll click Adjustments, Copy Adjustments, or you can use the shortcut key Shift-Command-C or Shift-Control-C on Windows. I'll select the rest of the photos. I'll click Apply Adjustments, or you can use the shortcut Shift-Command-V or Shift-Control-V on Windows. And there you go, the adjustments are done. Let's look at some results. So I hope you found the comparisons helpful. But what are my thoughts on Capture One's retouch faces? Is it any good? The answer is yes, it is good. As you have seen, the tools work as advertised all the way from blemish removal to under eye shadow removal and evening of skin tones. In addition, its ability to handle multiple faces and batch processing further enhances its utility. But that being said, are there any negatives? Well, definitely yes. Compared to another retouching tool, Retouch For Me, which I just reviewed, that tool allowed for editing the mask, while Capture One's Retouch Faces does not. And this limits precision and flexibility of your edits, especially when you want to exclude certain spots from the processing. Second, I found Retouch Faces tools were far more aggressive than Retouch For Me, and that might be good or bad depending on how natural you want the edit to look. Also, Retouch Faces can't do other tasks such as eye enhancement and teeth whitening which are supported in other portrait retouching apps. The next question to answer is, is this feature worth the steep $200 upgrade price? Well, if you're a wedding, portrait, or fashion photographer with a high volume workflow, then the answer is probably yes as retouch faces will significantly save you time compared to manual retouching with Photoshop. On the other hand, if you are not a portrait photographer, then the answer is clearly no as retouch faces is totally irrelevant to other types of photography. Best to wait for the next release, perhaps coming this October. However, it begs the question, why is it taking so long for Capture One to give any relevant AI features for its landscape photography customers. It's been quite a while. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think of the new Capture One 16.6 release. Are you upgrading? Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.